start by thanking uh, my colleagues from the Tulsa City Council uh, who have really helped me through this process and given me a lot of guidance along the way, and, and many of whom are here, thank you. Uh, also, I see a number of people in this room who gave me some really great insight and advice. Uh, Sheriff Dick Regalado, Sheriff, thank you. Um, you know, this has been uh, a, a really challenging process uh, that I'm proud to announce today, the next chief of the Tulsa Police Department, Wendell Franklin. <laughs> Wendell Franklin is a product of this city. As a kid, he grew up in North Tulsa. He gained admission to the magnet program at Grimes Elementary School and then went on to Carver Middle School and graduated from Booker T. Washington High School. He attended Tulsa Community College, and he earned his degree from Langston University right here in Tulsa. He also endured struggles at an early age in Tulsa, losing his mother to violence when he was only two years old, and later overcoming a speech impediment as a boy through his own hard work. 23 years ago this month, Chief Franklin joined the Tulsa Police Department because he loved the team concept that he saw in the department and because he wanted a job that presents new challenges every day. And throughout his time with the Tulsa Police Department, Chief Franklin continually sought out those new challenges in all parts of our city. He is unique in having commanded frontline officers in each of the department's three field divisions as a captain in the Mingo Valley Division and as the division commander over the Riverside Division and later the Gilchrist Division. His direct personal engagement with the realities of policing in all parts of the city will be incredibly valuable in his work as our police chief. Now, long before many of us started talking about community policing, Chief Franklin was doing it in his leadership roles around the city, whether it was working with business owners and forming an alliance to combat thefts or going door to door with neighborhood leaders to organize a neighborhood safety program, he took the initiative personally and carried it out effectively. One of the common themes that I heard from both citizens and officers over the last several weeks is the need for the Tulsa Police Department to maintain high standards. In my discussions with his colleagues, what I heard over and over again is that Chief Franklin's leadership style involves setting high standards, building teams to reach them, praising those who meet those standards, and being very tough on those who don't. In fact, some referenced that to me as a possible negative about him, that people under his command either elevated their game or they moved on to other assignments. But every person I talked to who raised this point said the same thing. Chief Franklin is tough, but he is fair. I'm aware that despite his various leadership roles, Chief Franklin has not enjoyed a high public profile as high as others in this process might have. And what I found in my discussions with his colleagues and people in the community is that this was simply a result of his leadership style. Chief Franklin is a tremendous team builder and he always puts the team first. During our panel interview last week, when we asked about his most rewarding moment with the department, he didn't recall a personal accomplishment. He recounted a time when he'd had the chance to raise public awareness around an extraordinary act of heroism by other officers. But for those who don't know him, or those who do, I've heard universal respect and admiration and testimonies to his high moral character, both inside and outside the department. I'm confident that once the citizens of Tulsa get to know him better, they will feel the same. Chief Franklin has an exciting vision for the use of technology in making Tulsa a safer place and improving relations between the community and police. In fact, before being named chief today, that is the area he presently leads at headquarters. Chief Franklin wants to use technology to make the work of the department more informed in real time and more transparent for the citizens of Tulsa. Chief Franklin has a track record of always seeking ways to improve, of never settling for the status quo. And he told me during the interview process that he didn't go through his career hoping to be chief. 
but he doesn't believe you grow if you're comfortable as an individual or as an organization. Out of several extraordinary public servants, I've decided that Wendell Franklin is the best person to lead the Tulsa Police Department moving forward because he has a clear vision for the future of the Tulsa Police Department, because he is an effective team builder with high standards, and because he knows personally the realities of community policing in all parts of our city. He is passionate about innovation, and his selfless management style reflects the ideal that my administration seeks to instill in the culture of our city government. I think you make better decisions when you hear a diversity of viewpoints before making up your mind. And I want to thank all my fellow Tulsans from across the city who assisted in this deliberative process. We had over 600 attendees at our public meetings, and I'm grateful for the personal guidance of my colleagues on the city council, former Tulsa mayors, local law enforcement leaders, and everyday citizens. I had direct discussions with over 160 people, and I've lost count of the number of people who reached out by a letter and email and social media, and all of it was helpful in making this incredibly important decision. I also want to thank those who very bravely put their names forward for consideration in a process that was unprecedented locally in its transparency. Going through the interview process and getting to know each of them was a great reminder to me of the extraordinary talent that we have in the Tulsa Police Department. I want to thank the men and women of the Tulsa Police Department who work every day to keep our city safe. They are what make it a great department, and they are worthy of a great chief. Lastly, I can never thank Chief Jordan enough for half a century of his service to our city. Chief Jordan was exactly what this city needed at a low point in its history. His steady hand has guided us through moments of severe trial, and more recently, moments of unprecedented he has set a high bar. <laughs> now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you your next Chief of Police, Wendell from my mind. I never had that expectation, never dreamed of this opportunity, uh, but I had people that helped me and pushed me along and were a sounding board to me to say, hey, you can do this. You can do better. You can do better. You need to be the one that's promoting through the ranks. Um, I've got to I've got to say to my my wife there, uh, she has been my cheerleader. Um, she has been the person that I've bounced any and every question or problem that I that I had. I went to her with it, and she helped walk me through that. Um, I want to thank my two uh, my two boys, Corian and Brendan, and Corian's wife Lydia, for they were the ones that kept telling me, why can't you do this? You should be doing this. And as I sat there all the years as my kids played sports, football, and, and going through school and on to college, and I, I would use, the, I, I, would, I would tell them, hey, you're, you're good, you can do this, you can, you can push through this. You can do whatever you want to do. And then to have them <laughs> later <laughs> flip the role on me, and now they're telling me, you can do this. You have an opportunity. So I thank them for that. Um, 
again, this is, this is all about us. This is not about one individual person, but I think that as we move through this, and, and I don't know what that's going to look like, I am so fearful of what that will look like, and I, I'm apprehensive and continue to be apprehensive as I take this, the next step forward. Uh, but I know that I have a great team of people around me that's going to that's gonna help me, that's there to assist. Uh, and it's not just for me, it's for this city and it's for this department because this department has such rich history and um, there's power in history. Uh, there's power in knowing uh, what came before you and some of the things that were in the past so that we hope not to uh, not to do those same things in the future. Uh, so I am very hopeful. I cannot stand up here and 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 not be fearful uh, because but I know that we've got such a tremendous group on our uh, TPD staff that's going to help and support me all the way down to the line officers that I've worked with uh, we if, if you go to any other part of the country and you put Tulsa Police Department up against any other department I promise you because I've been there and I've done it I promise you you will come back and you will say that you know Tulsa Police he may not get it right all the time, but they are so much better than A, B, and C over here. So I look forward to being having this opportunity to lead this department, uh, to move forward. And uh, one of the things that, that I believe is that if you are not growing, if you are stagnant, if you don't want to change, well, change is happening. Change is happening all around us. And if you don't change, this is like a business to me. If we don't change, um, then we are just like the Kmart, the Sears, those companies that did not change with the times. So we've got to be innovative. We've got to always be ever-changing. We are always morphing. Um, and that's, that's what I plan to do. Um, so thank you for this opportunity. I am so fearful of failing, okay? But I know I can't fail because I've got such a great group of people around me help me um, and I would just be remiss if I didn't mention uh, my uncle uh, my uncle Ray Nelson was on this department uh, and retired as a captain I believe in 2010 and although our relationship didn't really come about until uh, just before I came on this department um, he has been one that I've been able to bounce things off of and talk to because he lived it. Um, he lived this this department and, uh, and and he knows this department. And so I just know that he's proud. And you know, my parents as for my parents are deceased, but I know that that they are looking down on me right now and, and, and they are elated and I'm sure they're saying we're making history. So thank you and Chief Jordan, I'll turn it over to you. I still have a week left and I'll counsel him on the expectation of applause every time he comes in. <laughs> 
far as being fearful, I think anybody that's not fearful when they take this job don't understand the magnitude of the job. Um, but just like Wendell said, there's a team around him that will get him through anything just like they got me through anything. Um, I've been here since 1969. Obviously, I want, I've got a lot vested in this police department. And I want somebody to replace me that's really, really, really good. My son is in this police department. My nephew is in this police department. And I'll just say without equivocation, I could not be happier that they're going to have Wendell Franklin lead me through the next, the next few centuries. You worry about that as a chief. You worry who's going to replace you. Because you want your legacy, what you've done, you want somebody to improve on that and not to let things slide. And uh, with Wendell Franklin, it's going to be improved on. And I'm glad he's here. available for one-on-one -on -one interviews afterwards and I know uh, uh, that several of our folks here I'm sure that would love to visit with you. The district attorney Steve Kunzweiler I see is here, another person who gave me a lot of good advice and guidance on this. Thank you sir for being here. Uh, but thank you all for coming out and we'll all be happy to visit with you after this is over. Thanks. <laughs>